Wasp 2.6 is based on Android 12 and will feel familiar to anyone who's used stock Android 12 before or a ROM based on it. But it also manages to pack some intelligent additions, options and tweaks too. Top of the list is the new Krypton settings. Fantastic menu, putting many of the additions in a single place. But as most of the fun stuff is here, I'll cover it last and touch on the changes in the other menus first. Which brings us to the sound menu. Not much here, but it does add a toggle to unlink the ringer and notification volumes if you don't like them combined. And also the ability to change the volume slider to the left side of the screen, which better aligns with the location of the actual physical buttons. Moving on to the display menu, and we have a couple of changes that feel worthwhile. In adaptive brightness, we have a toggle for one-shot brightness, which changes the adaptive brightness to only adjust the moment the screen comes on. Excellent if your auto brightness has a habit of jumping up and down while you're doom scrolling. Under the lock screen menu, we have an always on display schedule. Useful if you only want it on at certain times and not be a constant battery drain. Lastly, we have live display, replacing the colors menu giving more options like color profile, display mode, reading mode, and picture adjustment. Back to the main menu and into wallpaper and style. Nothing new here, but it should be noted that there's actually a bit less control over the palette here than usual. But we'll circle back to that in another menu. Now we go all the way down into system and then gestures. Power button double tap to launch the camera is fairly standard. But here we can instead change that to turn on the flashlight if that tickles your fancy. Or if you like that as the camera, you can have the flashlight activate by holding the power button while the screen is off. This is one of my favorite additions. While still on the power button, there's no option to modify the power menu, but we do have advanced reboot as standard. Rounding out the system gestures is an option to add a three finger swipe to take a screenshot. One last nifty thing found in this menu is the system UI tuner, saving a separate install and giving you a bit more control. The main thing here is the ability to turn off status bar icons, like turning off that annoying NFC square. The rest of the options are not really interesting. And now we come back to the Krypton settings. First off, we have the theme menu, which lets us address the limited color palette options in the wallpaper section. Here we can choose any color we want, its vibrancy and how bright the overall theme is. We also have more than just color choices, with quite a few different font options. Even letting you go back to OnePlus Slate, if you're feeling nostalgic. There's also an option to change the icon pack used in the status bar, with a few subtle variations to really personalize things. While staying in the realm of the status bar, we move on to the status bar menu. Here we have the ability to toggle a network traffic indicator, double tap to sleep, make changes to the battery icon, disable the constant green privacy indicator for location that goes off every few seconds and an option to combine symbols. This was a fairly subtle change for me, but your mileage may vary. We can also add a notification count to your status bar icons. And if you usually have LTE appearing, it can be changed to 4G. We also have a toggle to basically combine your 4G and signal icons. All great steps to make things extra minimal. Our next section focuses on the quick settings menu. And it's here we start having to decipher a lot more shorthand acronyms. The top half of the menu is dedicated to album artwork, which appears inside the media notification. There are a few controls too, to adjust the visibility and blur, to make sure you don't run into any readability issues for some album art. We also have an option to change the location of the auto brightness slider to appear below the quick settings tiles. To add an auto brightness button next to it, and to even have the slider appear in the quick quick settings. So it appears with a single pull down rather than two. Rounding out this section are toggles to show battery estimates, showing text in the footer, and requiring an unlock to be able to use sensitive tiles. 
With still a few more menus to go, we move on to lock screen. Here we can add charging info, which gives a better indication of charging speed than just rapid, and also temperature. We also have more acronyms, with screen off fingerprint on display, letting you unlock your device with a fingerprint, even if the display is off, if you can hit the right spot. This pairs with haptics on under display fingerprint scanner. As far as I can tell, this will buzz when you first press the fingerprint reader while the screen is off. Then we have an option to hide quick settings if the device is locked. Basically hiding the tiles while keeping the notifications. And finally, edge light controls. The ability to bring back the Oxygen OS edge light, but with more customization of behavior and color. I actually really miss this feature. Then we have the miscellaneous menu which has a few useful features, like being able to turn off the screenshot sound, to jump forwards or backwards for music tracks with the volume buttons while the screen is off, and the ability to hide apps from the launcher. This one is a nice addition for those that like keeping things clean with Oxygen OS's hidden apps section. So you can do that again, just not any system apps. Rounding out all the new features is the OnePlus section. Here we have more control over the alert slider, being able to set what each stop does, and if jumping into silent mode, we'll also mute the media. There's also an option to show a prompt before the front camera pops up. This could be useful for those worried about the pop-up longevity. Down the bottom, and we have a slider offering greater control over the vibration strength, and also classic OnePlus gestures for anyone that missed them. Basically, bring back things like drawing letters or symbols as shortcuts. And that's everything I was able to find that cost bads over the stock standard skin. If you found this helpful, please chuck us a like and a sub. It really helps this tiny channel grow up a bit. And if you're after a video for installing cost on your OnePlus 7 series, that video will be floating around on screen too.